What's up guys, it's Topsy, and for today's video, we're going to be continuing with our whole little thought experiment, what if Duelist Kingdom had a speed duel box? And for today's video, we're going to be covering the father of duel monsters, Pegasus. As of right now, I've already done a deck for both Bonds and Bandit Keith for this hypothetical box, so if you're interested in either one of those two characters, I'd consider checking them out, and there should be a little hyperlink up above, so you can go ahead and click on that if you want to. Also, I did want to go ahead and clear this up before we get started though. All these decks are going to be constructed in a way where they could realistically be printed in a speed duel realistic box. That means that we're going to try keeping the power level of the cards getting printed to a reasonable amount. Additionally, uh, the boxes are going to be also constructed in a way where typically half the box tends to be like reprint, maybe like 55% is like uh, new cards. So don't expect to have the whole deck be just new cards. All right, with all that being said, Let's get started. All right, guys. So here we have Pegasus's deck. And if you remember from last video, I mentioned how Pegasus has never truly gone an actual good strategy. Um, in the past, he had gone two separate starter decks in speed duels. Um, I believe they were called like Destiny Matters and um, Battle of the Millennium, something like that. I'll show them on screen right now. Um, and in both of these starter decks, they were they were abysmal. Both his decks were really, really bad, especially uh, just out of the box. Uh, maybe they were better in constructed, but overall, Toons have never really truly made a splash in speed duels. And I wanted to see if I could fix that with this deck that I made him for this hypothetical box. So the original concept that I had for this deck for Pegasus was I wanted him to have a pure Toon strategy. However, I ended up caving and made a relinquished Toon strategy just because uh, that was like the last few ones they had for the starter decks. That's what they tried doing and I wanted to see if I could do something better than them. So that's what we have for today. All right, the cannon skill for this deck, the one that you're expected to play out of the box is this, Malicious Comedian. This skill tries to blend both the tune strategy alongside the relinquish strategy. Do keep in mind, um, this is very difficult to do because these both these uh, strategies work very, very differently. So I tried my best to give them something that was worthwhile while not being too broken. So the skill reads, activate this skill during your main phase. While you control a phase up toon world on your field, you can use one of the following effects once per turn. So I feel like this restriction alone is good enough to uh, set the tone for the uh, for the whole skill and the deck as a whole. Uh, shuffle one Toon Monster from your hand into the deck and add one Black Illusion Ritual and one Relinquish from your deck to your hand. I feel like this is a fairly balanced way of getting access to your ritual part of the deck just by uh, shuffling back a, a resource being a Toon Monster into the deck to be able to get access to both these pieces. As a whole, I think that's a fair trade-off just because we have plenty of skills right now in the game where you're able to do similar things to get access to like either generic ones or uh, much more powerful Toon Monsters, uh, not Toon Monsters, uh, Ritual Cards in the Alexis skill. So I feel like this meets a happy medium of being good enough for the deck while not being too far too broken. Uh, next effect we have here is Tribute 1 Face Up Thousand Eyes Idol or Toon Monster from your field and Special Summon 1 Bikuri Box from your extra deck. This is treated as a fusion summon. One of the iconic cards that uh, Pegasus used in the anime was the uh, the Bikiri Box. And yeah, and surprisingly enough, this card has never been printed. And I figured, you know what? This is the goodest time as ever to print this card. Um, honestly, we could probably completely ignore this part of the skill just because it's kind of like a like an ad extra addition. We don't need it, but it's kind of neat. The last effect, however, this is where the best part of the skill, the strongest part of the skill it comes in. Uh, it reads, tribute one face up relinquish from your field, then special summon one thousand eyes restrict from the extra deck. Uh, this is not treated as a fusion summon, so this is one of the parts that balanced out uh, essentially having metamorphosis via a skill. As a whole, I feel like being able to tribute off the relinquish in order to summon the thousand eyes restrict is uh, really, really helpful for this deck. Not only that, but if you want to use this skill, you're forced into the, the tune strategy, which is a notoriously bad deck it's not very good it's uh it's it's pretty pitiful sometimes i'm not gonna lie but being able to do it like this um makes it a lot more fair i guess that's what i'm trying to get at and lastly uh each of these skills can only be used once per duel so the once per turn clause alongside the once per duel uh clause as well are very helpful in balancing the skill 
uh, not only because you can't stack all three skills on the same turn, but you have to wait an entire turn to choose which one you want to activate. Not only that, but you only get a once uh, activation on each of these skills. So I think all three skills were fairly good. I think I did a pretty decent job of blending both strategies into one skill. Now, the other skill that I had, this was the original uh, skill that I had for the deck as the main one. But uh, I ended up changing uh, this to like a secondary skill because I went from pure tune to relinquish tune. So let's give it a read. Uh, this one's called Tune Frenzy and it reads, activate this skill during your main phase and apply the following. While you control no monsters, you can normal summon slash set tune monsters without tributing. Um, one of the biggest downsides to Toon Monsters is that they are very difficult to summon, especially cards like Toon Buster Blader, Toon AG Gear Golem, uh, Toon Dark Magician. All these cards are like very difficult to summon because they don't have a special summon condition, uh, and this makes them a lot easier. There are cards like uh, Toon Summon Skull that can't be no more summoned, which can't be cheated out with the effect. You still have to special summon the other condition, so I feel like this alone balances those cards really, really well. Uh, moving on, we have the other effect, which reads, discard one card and then add one Toon World from your deck to your hand. I feel like this is completely fair too. Uh, Toon World is a really bad continuous spell that the deck unfortunately needs in order to function. And having a cost on top of that, I feel like is just makes it more than fair. Because again, Toon World is just not good and it's a shame that the deck actually needs it to function. The last bit of this, uh, this skill is also another way to balance it out and preventing it from getting too good. And it reads, after activating this skill, you can't summon monsters except tune monsters or relinquish monsters. Also, any battle damage your opponent takes for the rest of this duel is cut in half. Essentially, these restrictions are mostly here just because I want this skill to be used primarily in tune strategies. Just so uh, no deck can do anything gimmicky where they try to break it. And additionally, because we can just normal summon monsters like Toon Itching Gear Golem that have 3000 attack points, I didn't want them to just be able to take a game over like, like that super easy, super fast. So cutting the damage they deal in half feels like a fair trade-off for just being able to summon them out fairly easily, being one of the biggest issues the deck had originally. Uh, overall, I think this skill is more than fair and makes Toons an actual interesting strategy to pilot. And if you wanted to, you can also play it with the Relinquish strategy. I wouldn't recommend it, but kind of cool. The last skill that I had for uh, Pegasus prior to me making the Malicious Comedian skill was just Toon Kingdom. I wanted them to have access to the Toon Kingdom field spell in some way, shape, or form. In the original form, the field spell exists. It's too strong. It's too annoying to deal with in speed duels. However, this is a more watered down version of it that I think meets a fair balance of being good while not broken. And it reads, this card's name becomes Toon World while face up in the field zone. Once per turn, if a face up Toon monster or this skill would be destroyed, you can place one Toon counter on this card instead. Once this card accumulates three counters, flip this card over. I think that's a really interesting way of balancing the skill while giving them a very powerful effect. Because uh, being able to protect your tune monsters once per turn or this skill feels really, really good. Uh, just because I think that that means a fair balance. The protection is very manageable, I, I guess. Uh, it only protects once per turn. If you try destroying again that same turn, uh, the destruction goes through. And I feel like that meets the happy balance between preventing tunes being too broken or too ass. But give me your guys' thoughts in the comment section below as to uh, these three skills. Which of these are your favorite? Did you like any of them? Did you not like any? Just give me your thoughts. Uh, I feel like overall I, they're pretty good, but I'd love to hear your guys' th thoughts in the comment section below. But now that we're familiar with the skills, let's go over the uh, deck list. And beginning with the monsters, I wanted us to get some uh, tune monsters that we haven't gotten in the game in for some reason. I feel like these cards are too iconic and they fit in the game just fine. First one being Blue Eyes Toon Dragon. This card is not that good. It has the summoning condition where you just tribute two monsters, two special summon this card, while you control Toon World specifically. So it's pretty difficult to bring out. Uh, it requires two monsters to be, uh, have on field in order to bring it out. And what's the reward? It can attack directly, and but you have to pay 500 life points in order to do so. This card is more than balanced, and come on, this is one of the cards that was iconic from this arc, and we have to get Blue Eyes Toon Dragon. Come on. We also have the Toon Dark Magician. This is just one of the good tunes in the game right now, and, and he also faces off against Yugi, Dark Magician being Yugi's ace monster. It just makes sense. Same applies to Toon Dark Magician Girl, another card that surprisingly enough we don't have in the game. I don't know why. 
Um, she's not much better than uh, uh, Tomb Summon Skull. She's slightly better. But besides that, like this card is completely balanced. Um, I would have loved to seen her in the game. Uh, she's she's just okay. So I figured, why not? It's not gonna do anything. However, this is where I got a little spicy. I ended up adding Toon Cyber Dragon. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Topsy, that's a GX card, and this is for Duelist Kingdom. Why does Pegasus even have this card? And my argument for that is that, well, we do see Pegasus make an appearance in the GX anime, and since he is the father of dual monsters, he can have pretty much any card in his deck. And honestly, if I didn't print him here, we would have no real set to print this card in, in a hypothetical box, because having Pegasus be a character in a GX hypothetical box would be weird. So I'm like, you know what? Might as well give him this card here. It feels a little out of place, yeah, but... It's honestly a super, it's, it's a really good card that the Toon Strategy would like to have access to because it has a really easy summoning condition and it just helps Toon so much. So I figured, why not? The deck needs the help. It's uh, not only that, but this card also has summoning sickness. So bringing out a monster fairly easily isn't that crazy just because, again, it's not able to attack the turn it's summoned and... Sidra in the game right now is back at 3, so being able to give the deck access to Sidra as well feels fine. I don't know. Maybe you guys disagree, but I think it's okay. Moving on, we also have Toon Goblin Attack Force. Again, uh, this is a really good card for the deck because it is a huge guy. Oh my god, he is huge. 2300 attack points. However, this card works exactly as Goblin Attack Force, the original one, where uh, if it does declare an attack, it gets switched to defense position with a zero defense stat. Not only that, but um, it has summoning sickness, and also it has the uh, the weakness of whenever Tomb World is destroyed on the field, it goes along with it. So I think all these aspects to it, uh, all these weaknesses that Toon monsters have inherently, bounce out a card like uh, Goblin Attack Force. So I feel like it's fine. Moving on, we have Toon Gemini Elf, just so we have some uh, regularly available uh, beatdown for the strategy, and she's already in the game. Next card up we have is Toon Harpy Lady, and this card is really, really strong. Again, I feel like it fits the theme of Duelist Kingdom, Mai was one of the characters in this arc, and this is one of her iconic monsters. Not only that, but this is a phenomenal piece of support for the Toon strategy, because this card not only gives you an easy special summon, but additionally it gives you back or removal being able to pop one card in the field while you control another Toon monster. And I think that's really, really helpful for the deck, just so uh, you can deal with back row a lot more readily. And this effect is similar to that of Breaker. Um, Breaker's great, but it's been unrestricted also, and this is a more uh, archetype tied back row removal, so I feel like that balances it out. This card's phenomenal, don't get me wrong, really, really strong, and would be really really helpful for the tune strategy so i feel like that's a fair addition to the deck the last two tune monsters we have here are tune mass sorcerer and tune mermaid just because they're just easy additions to the strategy um it was a bit hard to add more two monsters to the deck but i like the additions that i did um those five new monsters are really nice for the deck and they give the the strategy a whole new dimension i feel like so i like them all uh moving on to the last two monsters we have golden eyes idol I mainly have this card here because this is out of the last remaining support for Pegasus with the Relinquished Thousand Eyes Restrict strategy, this is my personal favorite. And all it really does is that uh, once per turn, uh, while it's face up on the field, you can uh, look at your opponent's hand, and that's pretty much it. And it also has the effect where it becomes Thousand Eyes Idol, the vanilla version of it, while on field. And that's kind of cool. Uh, being able to tie the whole aspect of Pegasus being able to look at your hand with his Millennium Eye into this monster where it doesn't really do much on field. Um, it just it just made sense to me. And I don't think it would be too broken. Uh, but I don't know, maybe you guys think differently. And then of course we have Relinquish because it's kind of important for the deck too. And yeah, that's the monster lineup. I like it a lot. I think we added a whole new slew of cards that really bump up the strategy to a new level, making it a lot more viable as a whole. Because again, guys, I can't stress this enough. Tunes are just not good in the capacity they're at right now. And adding these cards to the game, I feel like make them a little better. I mean, Blue Eyes Toon Dragon, I don't think does much, but you know, what? it's a cool addition. All right, on to the spell cards now. Uh, of course, Black Illusion Ritual, we have Relinquish, makes sense. Um, we have Mimic Cat, uh, it's already a card in the game, and honestly, it's just a really good card. 
uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and talk about the ones that already exist in the game. Uh, we have Tune Table of Contents and Tune World. Um, I feel like these are some of my favorite uh, Tune cards already in the game, and they just fit the deck really, really well. And if I'm not wrong, a Mimic Cat was activated in the anime against Yugi or Joey. I forget against who, but this card was activated. I, I vaguely remember this. So it, it just fits, and it's already in the game, as I said. As for the new cards in the deck, we have Tune Bookmark, and this card's great. Uh, it reads, add one Tune World or one card that mentions it from your deck to your hand. Essentially, this is just another uh, Tune Table of Contents for the deck, being able to add you the actual Tune World or a Tune Monster, because most of them mention Tune World. So I, I like this card a lot, and also it has the added benefit of being able to protect a uh, Tomb World on the field. So this seems really, really helpful. It might be a bit much just because it's another way of searching in the deck, but I don't know. Toons is, I, I, I keep saying this, but Toons is not a good strategy. So every bit of support it can get, I feel like it's very much needed. Not only that, but if it ever actually became a problem in a format, it could always get like semi-limited or something like that uh, to balance it out. So there's that. And the other card we have here is Toon Page Flip, which reads, If you control Toon World, reveal three Toon Monsters with different names in the deck. Your opponent then randomly picks one and it's special summoned, ignoring its summoning conditions. And this is a really interesting uh, card for the deck just because, depending on how you build this, uh, you're able to just bring out some of your best cards in the deck, like the Toon Dark Magician. And besides that, I feel like um, there isn't that many crazy tunes you can bring out with this effect that would outright break the game uh, maybe in a more constructed format it would be a lot more uh, problematic but it does have the condition where you have to control a tomb world on the field already to in order to activate it and you do have to reveal three of the same name which isn't that hard to do depending on how you deck built but in order to get the one that you want but i don't know this is probably the one that i have the biggest issue with me adding but I still kind of feel like it's okay, just because tunes are just not that good. Um, they all have so many sickness. Uh, they all, most of them in the format right now, have like some form of condition in order to attack where you have to pay life points. I just, I don't know, guys. I think they're not too problematic where we can get this. So I'm willing to change my mind on this, but I feel like it's okay. Uh, lastly, we have the trap cards for the deck, and those being Floodgate Trap Hole. The deck needs some form of interaction with your opponent. Tune defense. Um, this is a way to protect your tune monsters. You know, you're taking a lot of damage, but the card exists already. It's a way to protect them, and I don't know. It, I think it's fine. And the last one is Tune Mask. Another card that already exists, and another way of bringing out some of your tune monsters from the deck. This is primarily going to be summoning out the smaller ones, just because, let's face it, your, your opponent's probably not going to control like a high level monster when you activate this. It, they could, but you never know. And already, it exists in the game. And of course, the, la the extra deck, we have the Thousand Eye Restrict and the Bikiru Box. Um, and we already talked about those when talking about the skill. Um, as a whole, I like the deck that I built for Pegasus. I think this is a really interesting um, direction to take for him. Uh, there was other tune cards that I could have added, but I didn't really like them just because they felt a bit much. Uh, the deck already has a lot of stuff in the game already, which is interesting. So giving them a lot of new cards felt very much forced but as i said guys uh let me know in the comment section below do you like the choices that i made do you think i chose some choices that are too strong not strong enough it, it probably is gonna be the too strong uh if i had to guess but i don't know would you play this if you're if you're a tune fan do you, would you play this deck would you like to see this deck get printed in a hypothetical box let me know but yeah i'm not sure what character i'm gonna do for the next episode in this series um i'm leaning towards rex but I don't know, I might change my mind. We'll see. But thank you guys. Uh, as usual, if you end up enjoying today's video, then uh, a like would be very much appreciated. And hey, if you're enjoying the series so far, why not subscribe? Um, your favorite character might end up coming up in a future video. But with all that being said, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. I've been your boy Topsy, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.